In the world of hospitality, tipping has recently gotten insane. Like when I was growing up, you go to eat dinner, you sit down, you have a waiter or a waitress serve you. They've been working for you the entire meal. They're keeping your drinks full. They're bringing you your food, getting you bread, peanuts, whatever. I'm a big Texas Roadhouse guy. Had to have the peanuts and the bread with the honey butter. They're getting tipped. They're doing something. You go park your car valet. We're going to tip the valet guy. He's running and getting your car. He's doing it in the rain. He's doing it in the cold. He's doing it in the really hot. We don't want him screwing the car up, right? So we're going to tip him. He's doing a service for us. You go get your haircut, sport clips, or wherever you go. You get done with the haircut, you're going to tip them for the service that they provided. There are certain things that you're going to come across in life that you're going to give the person a tip for because they did it. But I think it's gotten out of hand. It's insane now. Everybody wants a tip. Literally, I was going through Starbucks the other day. Disclaimer, I don't drink Starbucks a lot. Just around Christmas time, I'll go get the... I don't know what it's called, mocha, like the hot mocha. It's pretty much just like a sugary hot chocolate. So I'm going through the drive-thru. They give me my mocha. They hand me the thing, the pad, plug my card in, and it's like 15, 20, 25% tip. I'm like, for what? What did you do for, to deserve a tip? You handed me my coffee. Or if you go inside a fast food restaurant, Wendy's or Culver's or Freddy's or McDonald's or Chick-fil-A, any fast food restaurant, there's no service being offered. So I think we have to go back to what is the point of a tip? Why are people getting tips? Where did it originate from? Why should we do it? And I think tipping has its place. I tip very, very generously. There's a book that I read years ago. It's called The Blessed Life by Robert Morris. And it was very profound, very life-changing for me. There's a lot the book covers, but one of the things he talks about is those who give more tend to be blessed more. Hey guys, when you're just starting out as a real estate investor, finding deals is the most important thing you can do. But unfortunately, it can also be your biggest hurdle. And let me tell you, it gets even harder when your business grows and you don't have a lot of time to look for properties and evaluate deals like you did on the front end. That's why you need to work with New Western. New Western has properties ready for rehab on their marketplace today. That means you skip the hours of research, driving neighborhoods, or calling agents. And instead, you get to start with a ready-made property. You can rehab and flip it or rehab it and burr it and hold it as a rental. So why is New Western good at what they do? Well, they buy and sell a property every 13 minutes. They work exclusively with investors and value-add properties, and that's all they do. They're licensed agents, they have a network of lenders, and they'll help you grow your business. So if you're ready to jumpstart your next project, visit newwestern.com, join their marketplace, and access the largest private source of rehab properties in the nation, right? And so you don't want to go giving just to get. I'm a huge giver. I pay my tithes. I do stuff for folks. I buy people stuff. But you can't do it out of the heart of like, I just want to get. But I think there is a correlation. Being a go-giver, go help as many people as you possibly can. And then there's a, probably a pretty good chance that it's going to come back to you. Even biblically, the Lord says, test him. In Malachi 3.10, God says, bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down you a blessing until there is no more need. The Lord literally says, bring the tithe, the full tithe, 10% into the storehouse. Test me on that and I will bless you until you have no need. And I can say personally that I have tithed from the day that I started working for my personal income and then my business is tied and we have never hurt. We have always prospered. And I think part of it's due to tithing and the same thing goes back to just giving in general. And so Robert Morris talks about how he takes a hundred dollar bill. I believe it is every week and whether he's at a restaurant or getting his hair done or just randomly in the store, whatever the case may be, he just gives somebody a hundred dollars. And so I'm not as consistent with it as Robert Morse as I'd like to be, but that's something that I try to implement in my life, whether it's giving people a hundred dollars every week. And you may not be able to do that amount, whatever amount is fine for you. Fine. Go bless people. If you possibly can, the whole point is go out and help people, whatever that looks like be a giver. And so I want to like cover those bases. So you guys know that I'm coming from a place of like, I give a lot. I help a lot. We're blessed. And so we continue to bless. 
but there has to be a line drawn somewhere. Check out this meme that I posted. I posted a couple times on my Instagram at finance cowboy. If you don't follow me and it has a picture of Amber Heard in the court setting. I think when her and Johnny Depp were going through their stuff and it says the cashier, when I press no tip after all they did was spin the iPad around and it's her with this sad face. It is hilarious. Every time I've posted it, it literally goes viral. And it's interesting. The perspectives I get when I click send and post that thing to Instagram, you have half the folks who are like, yeah, it's gotten crazy with the tipping. And then other folks are like, well, you know, I just feel like it's my duty. They're working hard to give me the drink and I want to tip them. Look, if that's your prerogative, go ahead. But for all of you who aren't sure if they earned the tip, I think it's okay to not give one when it's not due. I am huge on rewarding folks who are working hard. Even the legend himself, Dave Ramsey, is aligned with me on this. I'm not saying Dave's right about everything. There's a lot I disagree with him on, but he's a pretty conservative dude and we're aligned with this. So if you're in the camp to where you don't think it's right to tip when you're not getting a service, don't tip. You're not in the wrong. If you're in the camp to where you think you should tip to everything because it makes you feel good, do it. But don't ridicule the other people who don't tip when there's no service involved. And you guys who don't tip when there's no service involved, don't ridicule the people who do tip just because they want to and they feel good about it. I think we can all coexist together. And just understand the standard that is set for a necessity of tip versus doing it out of the goodwill of our heart.